Brian from Alpha MD. Welcome back. And uh, today I'm with Garrett. We're going to have a discussion a little bit about scar tissue in muscles for both TRT users and previous steroid users, people who do a lot of intramuscular injections. Um, and we have a couple of really interesting like thought processes behind this and some personal experiences. Um, so, you know, I'm a TRT user, Garrett's a TRT user. What's been your experience, Garrett, with like what you do, what you've done, the areas you've injected, and what have you kind of noticed for your, your long-term TRT use? And I actually was one of, that was one of the things that kind of scared me the most about starting uh, TRT is the injections themselves. Before I started TRT, I, uh, I worked in the emergency room for years and I was, you know, on a daily basis would see um, heroin users, you know, coming in with like infections from the injection sites. And so I guess, you know, since that was what I was seeing on a daily basis, I was scared. Well, how long is it going to be until I get an infection or an abscess or whatever from from injections? Right. Right. And, right. Um, yeah. And so that was my biggest fear is like, it's only going to be a matter of time until I get an infection, right? You know, um, it, but, uh, you know, I kind of worked through that fear and um, uh, never really had to deal with that. And, you know, I, I guess it was an irrational fear because, again, heroin is not sterile, right? You know, no, you know, no, <laughs> that's not not a legal thing right. made in a pharmacy, right? So, right. So they're injecting stuff that's from the street. And so, you know, and so I just wasn't kind of taking that next step with my thought process and be like, actually, this is, you know, a, coming from a pharmacy, this is sterile, you know, yeah. as you alcohol the skin ahead of time, it's, you know, all is all is well. And so, um, so that was my biggest fear for myself and and overcoming like um you know how long is it going to be before i get an infection and um so that you know that was uh, but you know it's been more than 10 years now i think it's, it's i've been on trt and it's uh well you know like like you said you know um I, there's certainly i've certainly gotten to the point where i do have some scar tissue from yeah the I do. I do too. I've been on it for like, I don't know, five or six years. And I think I can certainly tell a difference between the muscles that I genuinely inject into pretty often and those that I don't. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a negative, at least for me, I kind of feel like for whatever reason, because I always do the same muscles and I do cycle the areas, those muscles almost seem bigger, bulkier, and maybe in some cases stronger than they would be otherwise. I was kind of worried that scar tissue meant like, oh no, the muscle's gonna get all messed up and be unusable over a long enough period of time. But, you know, as someone who doesn't really love doing a lot of leg work and squats, because I used my legs for injections pretty often, I'd say that like, I probably have more strength there than I should. And it might be because of the injections being in that area. That's very like, you know, yeah, uh, personal perspective. <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I guess I've sort of had that same thought process too, because uh, I usually use the ventrolateral glutes, you know, as my injection site. And, um, uh, you know, I've definitely noticed maybe an increase in, in size in my glutes, in particular the ventrolateral region. Um, and so I guess it's possible. I don't know if there's any, you know, real scientific studies to prove it one way or the other. But I think colloquially speaking, it makes sense if that's the spot where you're injecting androgens, then the adjacent tissues will be the first to uptake it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would, those, those receptors are going to be the most saturated because they're the most adjacent. And then, you know, it will spread through the body from there. So that that makes some sense, I guess, in my mind um, mm -hmm. that that you could actually, you know, inject specific muscles and those muscles might actually grow us, you know, slightly faster than, than yeah. the rest of the body. You know, I actually had a thought of like, wow, I did this for my legs. I kind of want some bigger shoulders. What if I started injecting into my deltoids for a while? Like same dose, same everything, but like 
you know, I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> I have had that thought yeah. ever since, like, you know, I, I have never felt the negatives, the fear never seemed founded for me. And like you said, I don't think I've ever really encountered a, an issue with any type of infections because again, it's, it's all sterile, but I don't know. Do you think it's founded that if you inject into certain areas too often that they may get so built up on scar tissue that it may impede the function of the muscle or what's your, what's your opinion on that? Have you ever seen anything like that? Well, yeah. Um, you know, again, one patient that does come to mind. Um, I did see a patient who came into the ER and he had swelling and redness and pain at an injection site in his glute in his, and he admitted to me that he used illegal steroids he, and he purchased the batch from China and had it delivered to him. Anyways, uh, yeah, he developed an infection at an, in the injection site and due to the, the, the area and I was concerned, you know, on the amount of swelling, I ended up doing a, a CAT scan, a CT scan of the area so I could get a better look inside and see what's the extent of this infection. Uh, and uh, uh, in the scan, he did have, you know, an abscess for sure. But it, what was interesting is, you know, the scan included both sides and I could see almost like a cobweb of, of scar tissue in the ventrolateral glutes in the area that he had been injecting again and again for years and years. So mm -hmm. yes, I, I, I think you can say with 100% certainty that you know, the nature of sticking a needle into, you know, a, a, any tissue, muscle, yeah. or not, you're going to develop some scar tissue over time. Um, but, you know, uh, to look at the scan, uh, it was an extensive amount of scar tissue, but the guy had no loss of function. He was a very muscular, fit guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think even while I was draining his abscess, we were just chatting about weightlifting and bodybuilding and he was like oh yeah, yeah. I, I squat like 450 and I, so to have this amount of you know scar tissue through the the glutes which obviously you know are needed for squats yeah, um, yeah. You know, it, he had no loss of strength despite the extensive scar tissue he had so um yeah so i've definitely seen a visually <laughs> on a scan that scar tissue does develop with with re repetitive injection of you know the muscles so but it was also that same experience that made me think well does it matter like does the scar tissue right. cause loss of function loss of strength yeah because you've been on it for you know like you said 10 years and you've done a ton of injections and you've never really felt any of that yourself right no no you know I, here's the thing about it right if scar tissue and muscle is generally not a big deal you know in fact, mm -hmm. if you think if you really break it down, what is bodybuilding? What is hypertrophy? It's it's causing micro tears, you know, tiny thousands and thousands of tiny, tiny little tears that scar back together. Mm -hmm. And then that scar tissue is thicker, you know, more fibrous and creates increase in muscle size. And interestingly, increase in strength and contractile strength, right? Right, right. Scar tissue is not weaker. It's in technically scar tissue is stronger um, than the the essentially the native tissue was. Mm -hmm. it, you, so maybe it's it's strengthening you rather than weakening you. You know, well, purely subjective, but well, all, all I can say is I you know I probably have a significant amount of scar tissue in my glutes, but my squat's stronger than it's ever been. Right. So. Yeah that scar tissue is no longer a concern for me. Uh, I would be concerned if, you know, if, if someone were somehow, it, it, you know, missing and injecting a tendon, that's a, scar tissues and tendons a different story, but mm -hmm. you know, um, scar tissue and, and muscle, um, again, it's, I still consider it micro trauma. It's not a huge needle. Right, it's yeah. It's like you're cutting it in with a, a scalpel. It's, yeah. a, it's a tiny little poke that, bleeds heals and lays mm -hmm. down the tissue and again yeah, that tissue is is a little bit of that like vacuum in there as well as it like spreads out so there is some of that too i would assume right right so 
you know, I guess my two cents on the whole matter is, you know, yeah, you're going to get scar tissue if you're going to, you know, repeatedly, you know, cause micro traumas with, you know, injections in the same area. But uh, it, that's never really been an issue as far as causing problems. Yeah. But the, I mean, that kind of lines up with my experience. Uh, I haven't been doing it as long, but if anyone out there has other experience where they've been on medications from actual pharmacies and maybe they want to share um, any type of scar tissue buildup or personal experiences, like leave those down below. Maybe we'll make a another video at some point and like talk about some of those and maybe go, get into them. So like, yeah, please share your experiences. But um, this is kind of a subjective matter because there's not a lot of studies on this specifically, but it seems like at least for us, uh, scar tissue and muscles, not so bad, maybe not as big of a concern as we used to think. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just mention too, you know, if that's a concern for anyone, we know now, and there's plenty of studies to prove that subcutaneous uh, injections of TRT are entirely safe. Um, the, the testosterone levels, uh, are equivalent to, or sometimes perhaps even slightly higher than I am injections and um again uh it they, they seem to to work just as well as as intramuscular injections so if you know provided you know you feel fine doing subcutaneous injections there's no reason you can't choose that over intramuscular none at all um and i've i've done both i am and sub q um i've found both seem to work equally as well as far as how I feel and the positive effects. Um, you know, so I think as long as you're just using sterile technique either way, you'll be fine. But if, if scar tissue is a concern of yours, just pinch some fat and inject it there. And, and um, it, there's, there's no reason to think that you can't, you know, do that to, um, you know, alternate it up or to, if you are concerned, you're getting sore, you know, in the muscles from injection, you can alternate from IM to sub Q. The dose, the dosing's the same. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah, the absorption rate in fat is slightly slower um, because there's less blood flow and subcutaneous fat. But what we've found is it creates a depot of that oil. So because it's a slower release, if you do repeat sub Q injections, technically, um, you get a much slower rise, but also a slower fall. Mm. Um, so again, for those who choose to exclusively use subcutaneous, you are, you know, like we talked about, you know, the waves of highs and lows, you know, yeah. before and after injections, subcutaneous uh, basically is a much smoother ride. Um, so, you know, again, if as long as you have no problems you know sometimes feeling a small little lump where the oils you know there you know that will obviously go down as the body absorbs it but um it may be the better option for you you know so yeah so i mean there you go i i think you have alternatives if you're worried about this if you're someone who's been doing steroids or trt for a long time our opinion or a true opinion, not medical opinion, is that, you know, maybe not that bad, maybe even beneficial, um, something to kind of be expected. And it's a little bit different for muscles than other parts of your body. And if you are worried about it, sub Q is a perfect alternative. Um, you know, if more science comes out, we can change our opinion on that. But uh, it's kind of what we've seen through anecdotal evidence presented to us. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us today and uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you very much.